Yes. Camels, the cigarette that's first in the service, presents from the Six Ferrying Group Air Transport Command in Long Beach, California, the Abbott and Costello Program. <laughs> Guest Miss Merle Oberon and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, Abbott! Oh, come on. What's the matter with you, Costello? Hey, Abbott. What? I want to ask you a very personal question. What is it? Do you think I'm fat? Well, I'd say you were on the plump side. Why do you ask? Well, I was over by one of those big hangers. I was standing next to a blimp. All of a sudden, an officer points to me and says, Look, they're making them with faces now. <laughs> oh, he was just kidding. You know, there's nobody that has a better sense of humor than a flying man. I know that too, Abbott, because I'm a flying man myself. What do you mean? I started flying when I was a six-month-old baby. You flew when you were a baby? Yep. I flew out of my nurse's arms and made a perfect one-point landing. No, no. You mean three-point? No, one point. My safety pin was open. <laughs> Costello, I don't believe you've ever been up in the air. Oh, yes, I have. I used to be a hostess. Well, you walked into that one, my friend. <laughs> For your information, plane hostesses are always female. This was a male plane. Oh. <laughs> Tell me, Costello, when was the last time you were up in the plane? Do you want the truth or my version? Oh, no, 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 no. I want the truth. I think we'd get more laughs the other way. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tell the truth. Okay, I'll tell the truth. All right. I took my first plane ride today. Captain Dick Lasseter took me up in a great big plane. Try motor? Try what? I said try motor? Certainly we tried the motor. <laughs> what do you think we did? Push it? No, skip it. I'm not going to get it up in the air and then oh, try it. All right, forget about it. Forget See, about the motor? No, 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 no. The other thing. By the way, what kind of a pilot is he? Was he flying blind? <laughs> no, he was perfectly sober. <laughs> what a dope. Of course he was sober. Well, never mind that. You know, Lou... I wonder what these boys down here at Long Beach do when they go on leave. Well, I saw a bunch of the boys down at the beach with their girlfriends. Did they go down there to spoon? Well, they didn't go down there to wash their socks. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's Ken Niles. I've been waiting to see you, Ken. I was wondering what your wife thought of the picture we made last week. That's right, Niles. What does she think of my acting? Well, I don't mind telling you that she absolutely raved. She raved, eh? Yeah. They took her away the next morning. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Did you make that up yourself? Yeah, out of my head. You certainly are. <laughs> no. I ar hate that well, guy. I know you do, but quit arguing, Costello. I, I want to hear more about the picture. Uh, did you read any reviews, Ken? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. The Druggist Weekly gave the picture four aspirins. <laughs> See what happens, don't you? He's got the band framed up. Certainly he's got the band framed. That wasn't a funny line. There was nothing, no, nothing funny about that, brother. Oh, can you imagine that? Listen, Ken, I read all the reviews. And even Mrs. Roosevelt mentioned our picture in her column. What did she say? She said, my day was ruined. Right? <laughs> That's the one line I don't know why they got it look, in. Yeah, wait a minute, look. <laughs> Lou, didn't we get any compliments at all? Oh, sure. We got one cheer that I remember. Uh, where from? The Bronx. The Bronx? <laughs> you know... In Hitler's face without music. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we should give up the idea of producing our own pictures. Although. Don't you be silly. No, no, no. Perfume Pictures Incorporated is here to stay. And I'm ready to start another picture right now. Push the button for my secretary. Okay. Hey, hey. What's the idea of a horn for a buzzer? She used to be a waitress in a drive-in. Oh. Oh, boss, I'm sorry I was late this morning. Are you doing anything tonight? Why, yeah, uh, no, not a thing. Then try and get here on time tomorrow morning. <laughs> the fine secretary. How did you get a job here? I used to be in pictures. I played in the way of all flesh. What part did you play? One of the meatballs. <laughs> Everybody gets laughs but me. All right. <laughs> have patience, have patience. By the way, do I have any appointments today? Uh, yes, sir. At 12 o'clock you have an appointment with Hedy Lamar. What am I doing after that? Me, he asked. <laughs> Mr. Costello, could I speak to you for a moment? Why, it's Bots for Twink, our salmon. What's on your mind, Bots? Well, I want you to know that I was terribly hurt because I wasn't in your picture last week with Carmen Miranda. After all, if you're looking for new faces, look at me. My face is new, isn't it? Oh, very new. In fact, your whole head has only been slightly used. <laughs> Please give me a chance, Mr. Costello. I really do have a lot of talent. 
You know, I do most of the voices in all the Leon Schlesinger cartoons for Warner Brothers. You don't tell me. Yeah, for instance, here's a little porky pig. This is the way I talk when I play porky porky That's all, folks. <laughs> I'll play Porky for you for $1,000. What are you talking about? Warner Brothers don't pay you that? I know, but Pork has gone up. <laughs> what else do you do, Botsford? Oh, did you ever hear Bugs Bunny? I have a carrot here, so I'll give you a little sample. Hey, what's up, Doc? <laughs> uh, uh, what do you say, Tubby? What's cooking, huh? Of course, if you use Bugs Bunny, you'll have to use my wife, Mrs. Bunny. But we can't use two rabbits in our picture. Well, we couldn't separate them. That would be splitting hairs. <laughs> well, if you can't use the rabbit, maybe I could furnish some of the musical background. I can imitate an electric organ. Listen. <laughs> That's clever, ain't it? Do you call it an organ? Now, listen, Botsford. I can't use any of that stuff in my picture. Now, will you get out of here? Now, look what you did. No. Now, look what you did. Now, look what you did. Every time you yell at me, yell at, yell at me, I get, get the, the heat. Well, when you yell at me, he gets that. Why do you yell? How what did I know? Did I know that when I talk loud, he gets the heat? Did I know that? Well, don't yell at him. Do right. something for the poor fellow. But, please, Botsford. I talk to him. Botsford, I'm talking low and easy. Now, take it easy. No more hiccups. That brings him out of it. That brings him out of it. Does it? I didn't know that. All right. Take it easy. How do you feel? Uh, better now. Oh, you do? I feel fine. Oh, I'm glad of that, Abbott. Now, let's get back to this picture. But, Mr. Costello, are you sure you can't use the organ? Botsford, how many times do I have to tell you that I don't... Please. Please, Please. not in them again, didn't you? I don't know what I'm doing. Get him out of here! Hey, Lou, Lou Costello. Oh, yes, Niles. I want to ask you something. Do you know anything about winter sports? Are you kidding? I'm one of the best ski jumpers in the country. Really? Sure. Last winter at Lake Placid, I made my biggest jump. Yeah? I climbed up to the top of the slide. Thousands of people were looking up at me. Yeah? And when I leaped into the air, I went down at 60 miles an hour, and I made a sensational jump up 200 feet. 200 feet? Yep. And I could have even gone further if there was snow. <laughs> Oh, look better tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Lou, I, I know another good skier, and his name is Dick Durant, and he's one of the finest skiers in the world. In fact, he's so good that the government asked him to give instructions to ski troopers in lightning-fast mountain warfare. Dick knows his smoking, too. He said, quote, I've smoked camels for years. They have the full, rich flavor that I want in a cigarette. No matter how often I smoke, camels never tire my taste, never get my throat. Unquote. Yes, and with men in all the services, Camel is the favorite, too, according to actual sales records in the stores where they buy cigarettes. Try Camels yourself for steady pleasure. You'll like the way they hold up, wear well, pack after pack, no matter how many you smoke. The reason is extra flavor, and you know Camels always have more flavor. Better yet, Camels combine flavor with extra mildness, the extra mildness that goes with slow burning and cool smoking. One reason for that is costlier tobaccos, blended as only camels know how to blend. Now remember, you're the one who's doing your smoking. Your throat and your taste will tell you. C-A-M-E-L-S Camels, get a pack tonight. Send a carton to that fellow in the service. Meet Stevens, the orchestra, and the Camel Five with a new treatment for an old tune by the light of the silvery moon. Oh, 
Costello, we can't hold up production on your new picture any longer. Now, we've got to get a leading lady. How about giving that secretary of yours a chance? She has blue eyes and blonde hair. And a Supreme Court figure. What do you mean, a Supreme Court figure? A Supreme Court figure? Uh, what do you no mean? No appeals. Oh! <laughs> Besides, I phoned Merle O'Bron about playing a leading part. You did? Yes. I picked up the receiver and I said, Merle, darling. Merle, sweetheart. Merle, my love. And then? Then I dialed her number. <laughs> Merle Obron. Merle Obron would be swell in our picture. You know, and I, I sent for a new fashion designer. To... What is this that just popped in here? What, what happened? Well, now, wait a minute. I sent for a new uh, fashion designer. I... Is that it? Is now it? he's in. Come in. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. I'm your new fashion designer. Uh, Pierre U. Pierre. <laughs> to my friends, I'm P.U. <laughs> You said it, brother. Hey, get a look at that guy's hair. He's a male Veronica Lake. <laughs> Pierre, this is Lou Costello. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Costello? Thank you, sir. Uh, you are just the man I'm looking at. I've not seen you in a long distance. <laughs> get the way his hair hangs over his face. Pardon me, Pierre. Was your mother ever scared by a sheepdog? Oh, come on. <laughs> Leave the man alone. We've got to get him to design Miss O'Brien's clothes. Now, no more remarks about his hair. Looks like a palm tree in a high wind, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, Mr. Costello, I admit that my hair is a standing joke. Well, it needs a new switch. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong there. Keep quiet. We must have Miss O'Brien's uh, wardrobe designed before she gets here. Pierre, yeah? would you mind telling us some of your ideas on women's clothes? Oh, not at all. Uh, you know, the main thing is color harmony. Color harmony? Mm -hmm. What's that? Well, it's very simple, Mr. Costello. For instance, if um, you were carrying a pink bag... You would not wear a green dress, would you? Oh, gracious, no! I wouldn't dare! <laughs> Why, I'd be the laughing stock of my sewing circle. All right, come on, never mind. <laughs> what kind of line is that never to get me a big man? Forget it. Skip those things. Come here, Pierre. Now, uh, with a shortage of materials, how about something plain for Miss O'Bron to wear? Uh, we'll call it a uh, defense dress. How about that? How about making it out of barbed wire? That isn't defense. It ain't exactly an invitation. <laughs> Go ahead, Pierre. Suggest a dress for Merle O'Brien. Uh, you know, something that she can wear in our picture. Well, uh, being a brunette, I would suggest that I make Miss O'Brien a gown of apple green with a peach skirt, uh, lemon trimmings, uh, plum ruffles, an orange belt, and a tangerine scarf. Huh? That ain't a dress. That's a fruit salad. <laughs> Nevertheless, that sounds fine. Now, what about Merle's hat? Well, the hat should be a very simple but very smart. Uh, do you think the boys in camp here would like Miss Oberon in a hat that has three roses and a ribbon on the side? Huh? No, they'd rather have four roses with a chaser on the side. <laughs> now, get out of here and I'll design the clothes myself. Oh, Costello, you can't design clothes. Is that so? I just invented a lady's leg paint that takes the place of stockings. It even covers the knees. It disguises the knees? You said it. You can hardly recognize the old joints. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, we let Merle O'Bron design her own clothes for the picture. What do you say? Yes, and I'm just the girl who can do it. Now, listen, kid, you keep out of this. Look who it is. It's Merle O'Bron. <laughs> oh. Merle, I'm overjoyed. I'm overcome. I, I, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, uh, I'm over here. <laughs> Merle, I've always been in love with you. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Can I give you a kiss? Well, all right, but just one. <laughs> Lou, where did you learn to kiss like that? I used to be a bugler in a Boy Scout. <laughs> now, look, if you folks don't mind, we'll go over the script of the picture that you are going to play tonight. It's a story of the knights of old. Merle, you play a beautiful princess. And you wear a hoop skirt. A hoop skirt? Yeah, a hoop skirt. That's a parachute with legs. <laughs> Costello plays the part of a knight. He's in love with you. I thought knights were tall. Well, kid, on account of daylight saving time, the nights are getting shorter. <laughs> As the first scene opens, Merle, you're in the palace, awaiting the arrival of your lover. You are playing the organ. Organ? Like this? Ah, <laughs> oh, Bosford, didn't I tell you that you couldn't be in this picture? <laughs> don't do that. Oh, I started it again. I started it again. I started it all. Well, don't shout at him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. I'm talking nice and easy. Relax. Take it easy. All right, Botsford. Shut out of it. I'm talking nice and easy. Can I talk? I'm okay. I'm sorry, Botsford. Very sorry. I'm okay now, Mr. Costello. Oh, I'm glad you are. Now, keep out of the picture. <laughs> you did it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it again. Don't yell at me. Watch I'm sorry. Will you please put a gag in his mouth? Put a gag in his mouth? Yes. If I had a gag, I'd tell it myself. <laughs> Come on, let's get back to this story. Costello, as a knight, your costume is a suit of armor. That's right, Blue. You wear an iron coat, an iron vest, and iron trousers. In fact, you wear a whole iron suit. Where do I get a press? At Lockheed? <laughs> <laughs> now, your suit may become rusty, so you better keep yourself well oiled. I'd have to be oiled to make love to you in an iron suit. <laughs> Merle, you walk out on the balcony. Yes, and I sneak right up to it. But how'd you get across the moat? I caught the guard with his bridges down. <laughs> then we have the big scene where Costello serenades you with a song of love. And, Lou, I will drop a flower on you. In a mad moment of love? No, in a pot. <laughs> <laughs> now, Merle, you signal that the coast is clear. And, Costello, you climb the balcony. You reach Merle's side. You're panting from the long climb in that suit of armor. <laughs> yes, that's it. Now, you gaze into her eyes. Remember, this is your big chance. Never mind, no more pants. <laughs> hey, no more... Panting. Never panting. mind that. There's emotion in your voice. As you stand there in your iron suit, what do you say to her? Hey, kid, have you got a can opener? <laughs> Here's Connie Haynes with the Camel Five with a new Roomba from the pen of Cole Porter. Hasta luego. In a small cantina on an island far. Senorita Lina sang a song to a hot guitar. All the ding dong dandies used to gather about. When the lovely Lina, Lady Vina, would give in and give out. Hasta luego. Too bad we must part. Hasta Married Lena and her rich old guy moved to Pasadena, where the best people go to die. to die. But when she'd collected all his copper preferred, back to her cantina, lovely Lena went flying as she purred. Ladies and gentlemen, Perfume Pictures Incorporated presents the great costume drama entitled The Brave Knight Cut Off the Dragon's Tail or The Dragon Isn't Wagon Anymore. <laughs> the beautiful Princess Guinevere is played by Merle Oberon. Lou Costello is the brave knight Sir Porterhouse and Bud Abbott is his good friend Sir Loin. I play the part of the king. <laughs> As the scene opens, the princess and I await the arrival of two brave knights in our kingdom. Curtain. Greetings, brave knights. Kindly approach the throne. Greetings, your majesty. I am Sir Loin, knight of the bath from Saxony. And I am Sir Porterhouse, knight of the bath from Constantinople. <laughs> what a, What kind of words did I give you? Constantinople? Yeah, Turkish bath. 
Greetings, brave knights. I'm the Princess Guinevere. And who are those beautiful dames with you? They're my ladies in waiting. Well, what are we waiting for? Quiet, Castello. <laughs> oh, Sir Porterhouse, you must save our kingdom. The people are angry. They're clamoring outside the gates of the palace. Just listen to them clamor. Clamor, clamor, clamor. 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 <laughs> Did you hear that? The people are revolting. They certainly are. No, no. The... <laughs> no, no. The people are starving. They have not eaten in five days. Oh, they should try and force themselves. <laughs> they got to eat. <laughs> but, my dear princess, have we no food? Alas, no. The dragon has destroyed our crops. You mean all our corn is gone? Yes. There's only enough left for this program. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> what a fresh princess. <laughs> Listen. Listen to the people shouting. They have been shouting for five days, but I dare not speak to them. I will speak to the people, Your Majesty. Open the door. I'll make a speech. <laughs> people of Saxony! Got him. <laughs> now, my dear princess, just what do you desire us to do? My dear knight, for several years now, my father has been bothered by a terrible dragon. Why doesn't he pick up his feet? <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. Nobody understood that. <laughs> Today, the dragon is coming to carry off the princess Guinevere. You must save me from this mean monster, Sir Porterhouse. He's a very mean beast. Okay, kid. He has two heads, one at each end. How does he sit down? <laughs> he can't. That's what makes him so mean. Well, don't be mean. Uh, don't worry, Princess. <laughs> All right, I'm allowed one mistake, eh? I? <laughs> I am not afraid of nothing. One time I climbed up a tree and I bagged a ferocious tiger. You went up a tree after a tiger? No! He came up after me! But you said you bagged him. I did bag him. I begged him to go away, but he wouldn't. And what happened? Well, I snapped at the tiger, the tiger snapped at me, and suddenly something whizzed past me. What was it? Pomona. P Pomona. <laughs> Talk sense, will you? Then my uncle came to my rescue, and I finally brought that tiger home stuffed. What was he stuffed with? My uncle. <laughs> Oh, Your Majesty, the dragon is almost upon us. He's coming to get the princess. Quick, princess, button up my iron suit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. I thought you were a princess. I work the swing shift on the side. <laughs> Costello, look at that thing belching smoke and fire. Is that the dragon? It ain't a smudge pot. But... I'm getting out of here. Too late. He's got us trapped. Here. Here he comes. Now, do what he does. Do exactly what he does. Right. He's staring at you. Stare back at him. I can't. Fuck ah. it. I can't do it. Quiet. He's roaring at you. Roar back at him. <laughs> That'll scare him. <laughs> Wait, a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now he's wagging his tail. That lets me out. I... <laughs> Look out. Look out. He's got a charge. He's going to charge? How much? No. <laughs> oh. Quick. Grab him. Grab him. I have a gun. <laughs> There's a fancy line. Grab him by the gullet. Grab him by the gullet. By the what? The gullet. Gullet. The dragon's neck. Let him neck. What do I care about their love life? <laughs> Give me my sword. Give me my sword, somebody. I'll cut his nose off. But how do you smell? That is something that should only interest another dragon. <laughs> Look out, he's coming at you. Be careful, Costello. Your back is turned to him. He's coming up behind you. Are you okay? He got me. Where did he get you? Well, if I was wearing a license plate, he would have got off the last three numbers. <laughs> hey, he ruined my suit. My good iron suit he ruined. You nasty dragon. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Don't yell at me. Uh, what is with this? How can I do the dressing? How can I do the dressing? Watch me. Now, stop. 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 Okay. What can I do to keep you quiet, Butts? Will you cut it out? <laughs> I'm <only> sorry. <laughs> and it's your own fault for hollering at him. There's only one, only one thing that'll cure my hiccups. If you let me kiss Miss Oberon. Oh, very well. I'll kiss you. If only you'll stop those awful hiccups. Go ahead, Botsford. Kiss her. Okay. <laughs> um, how do you feel now, Botsford? Oh, I feel fine. But, it, what? <laughs> <laughs> Some 
tunes you whistle for a while and then forget. And others stay with you for years. I think the ones you remember are the ones that have character. I believe that goes for cigarettes, too. We say that camels have character, and we back that up with the thousands of smokers who have stood by camels for 20 years and more. We think it's true that more people have smoked camels longer than any other cigarette. Try camels and see for yourself. Try them in your tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat, your own proving ground for cigarettes. Your taste will tell you that camels have more flavor, and it's extra flavor that helps make camels hold up day in and day out. Makes the second pack better than the first, and the third better than the second. Your throat will tell you about mildness, too. It's the best judge you'll find. Yes, camels are mild, cool smoking, slow burning, because they're expertly blended of costlier tobaccos. Your throat and your taste will tell you. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, get a pack tonight. You'll want to buy a carton tomorrow. Here's more news about the camel caravans, those traveling shows which entertain the men in the army camps. 32 performances of the camel caravan units will be given to men in the training stations throughout the coming week. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Thanks, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really been a thrill for Bud and me to do this program from the Ferry and Command Air Base here at Long Beach. And an added thrill to be here with Merle Oberon. Thank you, Lou. I had a wonderful time, and it's been lots of fun. That's right, Merle. And we'd like to extend our sincere thanks to Colonel Ralph E. Spake, Lieutenant Colonel John P. Frame, Jr., and their splendid staff of officers for the opportunity to make this visit. Next week, we'll be back in Hollywood on Thanksgiving Day. In addition to the regular gang, we'll have as our guest, Herbert Marshall. And we do hope you'll all join us. Until next Thursday, Bud and I wish you all a very pleasant... Good night. The Camels present four great shows each week. Tomorrow night, the Camel Caravan with Lanny Ross, Xavier Cougat, Herb Schreiner, Lou Lair, and their guest star, Bob Hope. Saturday night, thanks to the Yanks with Bob Hawk. Monday night, Blondie. And next Thursday at the same time, Abbott and Costello with their guest, Herbert Marshall. Our broadcast this evening was from the 6th Ferrying Group, Air Transport Command at Long Beach, and does not constitute an endorsement of our product by the War Department, as they do not endorse any product. The Army has also requested us to make this announcement to all men of 18 and 19. There is a serious need for young men, so serious that the Army is willing to let men of 18 and 19 choose whatever branch of service they desire. Go to your nearest Army recruiting office or induction station tomorrow. Learn about the jobs the Army has open in 13 different branches, all explained by men who know these jobs inside and out. Listen to the Camel Caravan tomorrow night with Lanny Ross, Xavier Cougat, Herb Schreiner, Lou Lair, and their guest star, Bob Hope. And now this is Ken Niles wishing you all good night. Mister, if you've got a pipe that's biting you, why, it just means one thing. Your pipe's hungry. Yes, sir, hungry for Prince Albert, the mild, rich, tasty tobacco that won't bite your tongue because it's no bite treated. P.A.'s crimp cut, too, for easy packing and stay-lit burning. Around 50 pipefuls in every handy pocket package. 